Hey, it's Catlin here with your uh, lesson 15 for your homework this week, third page. Uh, let's get jump. Let's jump right in. Diego is solving the inequality. He solves uh, the equation and gets x is 50. So he's already done the work for us. And then it's asking us what the solution should be. So we know that the solution is going to be based around the number 50 because of the work that he's done. We trust that he's doing it right. It's a dot that's shaded in because of the or equal to. Uh, we just got to figure out which side of 50 is the answer is less, greater, or equal to. We can go ahead and eliminate these because it's not going to magically become greater or less than with there's an or equal to involved. So we know that's going to be true. The best way to see if this is right is do the zero test. Let's see if zero makes it work. And if it does, we shade toward it. If it doesn't, we go the other direction. So... <clears throat> Let's plug in 0 here. 100 minus 3 times 0. 3 times 0 is nothing. So 100 minus nothing is 100. Is 100 greater than negative 50? And that is, of course, true. So if our solution is 50 based on his solving, 0 would be over here to the left. 100 would be this way. So we would shade toward the 0 since 0 is a solution that does make this true. And that means that we want all of the numbers that are less or equal to 50, which would be B. Number two, let's solve this inequality and graph it. So let's do the full thing. Uh, let's treat it like it's an equal sign first. So negative 5 times X minus 1 group equal to negative 40. Our first step is to, of course, divide our total by our amount of groups that we have. Negative 40 divided by negative 5 is a nice positive 8. So x minus 1 equals 8. What number minus 1 is 8? Well, that would be 9 because 8 plus 1 is 9. So 9 is our solution. So let's go ahead and draw our number line. Let's put 9 right there in the center. Here's 10. Here's 8. I'm not doing any more. I'm going to put a circle above the 9 without it filled in because it's not an or equal to. And we just got to decide left side or right side. So let's do a zero check. Let's plug in a zero and see if it makes the original inequality of greater than negative 40 true or not. So zero minus one is negative one. <clears throat> negative five times negative one is positive five. Is positive 5 bigger than negative 40? Of course. So 0 is the solution. 0 is like over here somewhere. So we're going to shade toward it, which means that our x is 9 as a solution, but our inequality is all of the x's that are smaller than 9, like 8 and 0. So our answer is x is less than 9. All right, let's pick all of the values of x that make this inequality true. Instead of testing them all out individually, let's solve it and then just pick the ones that make it true. Much faster strategy than testing them all out, okay? If we solve this like it was an equation, negative x plus 6 equals 10, we would subtract 6 and we would get negative x equals 4, thus x is negative 4 because of opposites. So x is negative 4. Let's figure out which side of negative 4 that we want to deal with. Okay, here's 0. Here's negative 4. Let's plug in 0. Is 0 plus 6 bigger or equal to 10? And that's a big fat no. So we know that 0 doesn't work. So we don't want to shade towards 0. We want that number, and we want to include that number, and everything less. Numbers like negative 6, negative 8, stuff like that. So numbers that are smaller than negative 4 is what we're looking for. So x is less than or equal to negative 4. All right, let's check it out. Nope. Nope. Yes. Or equal to, so yes. Nope. Nope. Positive. Nope. Yes. Easy as that once you know the answer. Take a lot more time going the other route. All right, the price of a pair of earrings is $22, but Priya buys them on sale for $13.20. How much was the price discounted? All right, percentage. <clears throat> Set up a table. The percent versus the dollar amount. 
the 100% price before the discount was 22 bucks. The price after the discount was 32.20. So, let's divide 22 by 100, which is really easy. That's 0 0.22 is our constant of proportionality. So to find out how much it was discounted, let's divide 1320 by 22 hundredths. Let me pull up my calculator. 1320. 13.20 divided by 22 hundredths. That's 60. All right, so let's put that in our table and try to make sense of it. So 60. So if it went from 100% full price to 60% of its price, this is a 40% discount. You can see the drop is clearly 40%. So it was 40% off. What was the percentage? Oh, I'm sorry. How much? I answered number two with that one. Got them both there. How much was the price discounted? Well, it looks like it was discounted by their difference. So you would do 22 minus 1320 for that. And the percentage, I'm sorry, was 40%. So I did the harder part. Uh, first instead of last. So when we subtract these, 80 gets me to 46, 8, 880. So it's $8.80. And you'll find that 880 is 40% um, of 22. It kind of supports what we have there. It's 40% it's of it. Half would be 11, right? So it's a little bit less than 11, which makes sense, 40%. And that's the last problem on this page.